Hey everybody, uh, Patrick here at Waterless HQ. And uh, as some of you may know, we have a tendency to like to build things. And this summer we wanted to do another build project. Last summer we built the Teardrop, which is right here. That was such a fun build, really fun project. And we are having even more fun using it now that it's built. Um, so this summer we wanted to do another project. Um, same kind of idea. Um, building a piece of equipment that you would use yourself to kind of gain appreciation for the kind of the work and everything that goes into it. Uh, but we wanted one that was a little bit less effort than the teardrop because that was a pretty um, pretty big build. So what we're going to do this summer um, is we're going to build a surfboard. I don't know if you've followed these guys up in Maine, um, they're called Grain Surfboards, and I've been like a huge fan of their uh, their work for years, um, but I never got a chance to build one of their kits yet. So I'm really, really amped that we're gonna get to do this. Um, so we're gonna build one of their longboard kits, and then the idea is hopefully we're gonna go and take it up to New England, where I grew up, and uh, Fiona and I are gonna do some longboarding. Um, but we're only gonna build one board, uh, one of the grain boards, and, and there's two people obviously, Fiona and I, so the, the other plan is I, I actually have a longboard that I bought in Rhode Island circa 2000-ish. And like most people can probably um, relate, um, over the years I haven't really taken as good a care of this board as I should have. So as part of this um, video series, not only are we going to build the grain board, um, but I'm going to try to bring the old longboard back to life and really fix her up good. So. Um, first step is to go dig it uh, out of the yard. This is a nine foot six inch Stuart Colin McPhillips Pro Nose Rider Longboard. Um, it's a fantastic board um, that I picked up in Narragansett, Rhode Island uh, during my college years. And it's just, it's an awesome, awesome longboard that I've done a really bad job at taking care of. Um, so as what I want to do is, is kind of run through the whole board, clean it up, find out all the different things we have wrong with it, delamination, dings, fiberglass cracks, water in the in the foam, all that kind of stuff. And we're gonna go through how to fix them, how to do them so that people at home, um, it's pretty easy to find cheap beat up um, surfboards on Craigslist and stuff. I mean, it's not that hard to really bring them back to life. Um, and it's it produces a lot less waste than going and buying um, a brand new board. So that is our goal. Um, with this and then over here we have the grain kit so the grain kit comes with uh, really just a lot of pieces of wood um, it's it's quite a bit smaller in terms of uh, materials than uh, the teardrop so it's a much more manageable build um, to do in a garage or out here in the carport where we're doing at the heart of any of these builds is the manual and this is like your your Bible to guide you through uh, the whole building process to make sure that you build a board that's both functional and beautiful. Looking at this, the first step um, before we, we really dive into the build at all is we need to build um, a table. And the table is basically going to be the structure that we use to build the board um, and keep everything symmetrical. So if you imagine if you have a table that's kind of crooked and has them bend to it, you're not really going to have any reference to what is straight. So um, it's really important to have a very symmetric table. And in the uh, in the manual, they walk through how they re uh, recommend building one. And it's going to require us to get a little bit of wood and uh, do a little uh, kind of custom construction. So that's our first step. Um, time to head to the lumber store to buy the wood, build the table.
we've gone ahead and cut our plywood sheet into small strips like this, and we're gonna place them across our two by four, sort of like rungs on the ladder. Um, but before we drill them into the two by fours, we have to figure out where they're gonna go. And where they go um, depends on the cross sections of the board. So this is the some of the CNC cut pieces uh, from grain. And what we're gonna do, if you go in here, you'll see that they're attached um, with these little uh, um, pieces of wood. And you can just sort of pretty easily like kind of break these and kind of pop the, the part out. Uh, you just want to be careful that you don't you know, damage the, uh, the part that you're keeping. And then what we're going to do is take our, our rasp here and just clean off the nubs. Now that we've cut out the longitudinal frame, so this is the, the frame that's going to run longitudinally down the length of the board from the nose to the tail. What we want to do is just sit it on our table and we're going to put the ladder rungs um, and align them at the center of these notches. And the, the notches are where the, the cross-sectional frames are going to attach to the longitudinal frame. I'm not sure if that's the right terminology, but that's just how I'm describing it. Um, so we're going to just line all of these up and mark it on the two by four. Make sure that each ladder rung is at a 90 degree angle, that it's equal spaced um, to side to side. And then we're gonna come in with uh, just some wood screws and do two screws on each side and attach each one. And then we should be left with a very rigid and strong table that we can use for the rest of the build. We finished our rocker table. Now it's time to give a little bit of love to the, uh, the Stuart board here. Um, and it's a little bit difficult to tell where the, the damage is. Like you can see there's some, there's a good old ding and repair job there. But in general, it's a little hard to see because it's so dirty. So I'm just gonna take the fin out and uh, just get a cloth and a scrub brush and just give this a good bath so we can reveal uh, how much work we have to do. see why it was so hard to get out it's only been in there for almost 20 years once you wash off the board you get a much better sense for uh, how much damage there actually is um, some sections look better than others and some sections look worse um, starting at the nose this board has a lot of uh, cracks and, and scrapes up in the fiberglass there's actually one here that still looks like it's all the way through the glass if I push through there you can kind of get a sense the glass is moving a little bit um, so this section needs a lot of love um, this white stuff is that instant epoxy putty you can get at a surf shop and if you're in a pinch and you just want to try to keep water from getting into the foam you can use that and you can tell I've used that a bunch over the years but this really is a temporary repair and uh, as you can see there's a good good crack right here um, it's not a permanent repair so there's a lot of work on the underside of the board towards the nose as we sand this down I'm guessing we'll probably end up putting a nice big piece of glass here um, just to really strengthen it, strengthen it up and fix it. Uh, moving back, the rails aren't too bad. Got a few just sort of dings here that look like they were partially repaired, um, but could definitely use um, some love going back and, and uh, kind of grinding those out, putting more glass on them. Then there's a bunch of these little kind of punctures in the glass. They feel relatively stiff. This one's fairly big but still pretty stiff. There's, there was a repair done here. Same with this the repair there as well. So what we're gonna wanna do with this kind of stuff is just sand it off and probably put a, a nice patch of glass um, and then ferret and make it nice and smooth. It'll look really ugly, but we're gonna paint this board anyway. So anything, any work we do on it um, is gonna get erased with a good paint job. Uh, here are the specs on the board, the shaper, whoever GM is. 9, 6, 23 and 3 8, 3 and 3 8. It's a great board. Um, I love this shape. Um, this might be a little bit hard to see on the video, but here we have a kind of like a dent. And if I pull the board up, you can kind of see it there. See that dent? And you don't really want a dent in your board. Um, it's not going to make it as hydrodynamically smooth. So this is something, it's not actually a crack, 
and the, the fiberglass feels pretty stiff. So we probably don't need to glass it, but we might want to put some fairing compound in here and just smoothen it out. Um, looking along the stringer, stringers are areas where you can get some cracks because you have really stiff wood and then you have more flexible foam underneath it. So over time, what will happen is there'll be a, a kind of like a ledge. You can see the ledge here where the foam will get compressed, but the wood will stay up. So this tends to be an area of fracture and you can kind of see we got some cracks here. So we're gonna to wanna to go in very carefully and make sure all these fin boxes, everything along the stringer um, is looking good. And, uh, but so far on the underside, nothing really too complicated. The top side of the board actually looks pretty good. There's no real major dings. We've got a couple just little um, dings and cracks that have been repaired that we can freshen up and just kind of clean up. Now, up on the nose, there's probably the most damage up here, just some cracks. But when we attack the bottom and do that, uh, that glass job, we can try to tackle that all together. Um, but moving aft on the board, it, there's no, not too much damage until we get to the back. And there's something right around here you might not be able to notice. If we come back here, there's a balloon here. And if we push down on this, you'll see the whole... Let's see if I can get this. You'll see how all that glass moving up and down. And here what's happened is the fiberglass has actually lifted off the foam. This is called delamination. And delamination is uh, kind of like a growing problem. If you don't deal with it, um, it can grow and grow and grow and the fiberglass will separate more and more. And the big problem with this is the fiberglass bonded to the, to the foam is what gives the board its strength. So having this here, especially having one so big, you know, it's about a foot long, um, is really making the board weaker. So two ways you can fix this. Kind of the quick and dirty way that some people do is you can drill a tiny hole in one side, a tiny hole in the other, and you can kind of squeegee in um, resin and it, it'll fill in the gap um, between the, uh, the glass and the, the foam. The problem with that you're, is you're gonna be left with kind of like a big bump and it's really not the ideal solution for the maximizing strength. What we're going to do is we're just going to go and we're actually going to cut this piece of old fiberglass out, expose the foam, and we're going to re-glass this completely. Since we're going to go to the trouble of really trying to bring this board back to life, we might as well tackle this um, properly. So we've got a little delamination, we've got a little bit of uh, some dings, some cracks, kind of a little bit of everything, um, but uh, nothing too bad. The structure of the board, the stiffness of the board is good. It doesn't seem like it's going to buckle or anything, which would be a... That'd be a much harder thing to to uh, to fix, and the you know the the rails, the overall shape and rocker of the board look great. Um, so overall, I think this is going to be a manageable repair, and hopefully, um, this will be stuff that you can apply to boards um, that you find um, at garage sales and stuff to help bring them back to life and have fun with them. Our laminating table is complete. It basically looks like a big ladder and uh, quite heavy, very stiff. And uh, again, what we've tried to do here, just laying out this uh, interior frame, we just lined all of our um, little pieces of wood here with the cross section. So later on, it'll make more sense in future episodes when we start clamping things together, we'll be really happy that we have these uh, pieces of wood here. So uh, that's going to be it for this episode. We'll wrap it up for this episode and we're going to pick it up, um, putting the cross section pieces together and uh, starting to bond and prep the uh, bottom layer of wood. So stay tuned.